Today, we work from anywhere and everywhere on more devices, over more networks, and facing more risk than ever before. Widespread phishing, malware, ransomware attacks, and other frauds pose a risk not just to individuals or platforms, but to entire economies, governments, and our way of life. After his master's degree in computer science, Yara Staring started this month as a PhD student at the Services and Cybersecurity Department, working on defense techniques against malware. According to Yara, malware is out to make your life miserable by deleting files or stealing information. He has researched different code injection techniques that are used to ensure that malware is not recognized by virus scanners. And even better, he has developed a detection program that prevents malware from being successful. I am what you could call a stereotypical nerd. I love programming, I love mathematics, and to be honest, I probably spent the better part of my day behind some kind of computer screen. But my story has actually a bit of an interesting beginning. In fact, my story actually has a beginning with a family that is very much the opposite. Take my mom, for instance. She plays music day in, day out. My father, well, he has this thing for language and storytelling and theater. And my sister, well, she's, she reads books like nobody's business. Now, you can probably imagine that it's not so difficult to imagine that I actually grew up with an appreciation for art. Now, for me, it wasn't books or theater. For me, it was drawing. I drew a lot when I was a kid and I would spend countless of hours drawing anything that my imagination could bring up. So how on earth does a guy like me that loves drawing get into malware analysis? They seem very different things. Well, the trouble started when, my, when I found out that my mom worked in IT, and sometimes she would work from home. And when she did, I would sometimes sneak into her office, grab a chair, and just sit next to her. And I would watch. I would watch what she was typing away, watch what these patterns, how these patterns emerged on her screen, things that you would see in a matrix. <laughs> now, needless to say, I didn't understand anything of it. I mean, at this point in my life, I could barely read. But the idea fascinated me, because somehow, she was able to tell the computer whatever it is that she wanted it to do, and that stuck. So fast forward a couple of years later, I discovered the world of computers. <laughs> I, uh, the one thing that I realized very quickly on is that drawing a picture, the thing that I was used for, uh, to so, for so long, is actually not so different from programming. Now, of course, Mechanically speaking, it's very different, right? But the general approach is very much the same. For example, let's say you want to draw a landscape. Now, you don't just start drawing a landscape out of nowhere. No. You start to think about all kinds of components that this landscape has. Maybe there is a mountain ridge in the horizon, but there is a tree in front. Maybe there is a castle in the middle where, where the sun is shining on, on towards it and casting all kinds of complicated shadows. All kinds of considerations that make this thing a beautiful picture. And with programming, that's exactly the same to me. Because programming, it's never about coding, at least not to me. Programming is about finding out this structure, this architecture, this composition, if you will. Finding these components, let them talk to each other in some way or another, in the most clever way possible. And that fascinates me. Now, in my line of work, I actually don't do a lot of programming anymore, which may surprise some of you. But what I do instead, I look at other people's code. And um, as, as much as someone can look at an image of, or a drawing, 
I look at programs in the very same way. When I look at a program, I don't think about code. I think about what were the programmer's intentions? How is it made? Is it made well? How are these components that we just talked about communicating with each other? And this is exactly also what got me into malware analysis, because frankly speaking, I think the people that write computer viruses are perhaps one of the most smartest people in the world. Not because they write beautiful code. No, they don't, really. But the people that write computer viruses, they are not afraid to think outside of the box. Hackers don't care about rules. Well, I guess they care about rules, they care about breaking them. But when you are not afraid to break the rules every now and then, one of the most elegant, simple, yet beautiful solutions can emerge. Now, rest assured, I have no intention to ever write malware myself. Um, frankly speaking, I like to stay on the legal side of things. But I like to think about how to defend ourselves against these things. Because let's be honest, nobody really likes a computer virus on their computer, right? But how do we expect ourselves to defend ourselves against these things if we have no idea how they even work to begin with? And this is why I do the things that I do. I combine my passion for art and programming. I really think these things are pieces of art. And I use this thing to better understand how the hacker thinks, how they work, how they operate. And by extension, I help to defend the internet and make it a little bit of a safer place. Thank you.